Welcome, I'm Edward, the Training and Technical Sales Manager with RPB. In this quick video, we're going to show you how to set up your Z-Link and welding attachment for your Z-Link welding grinding respirator. First, you need to remove the little covers on the sides where the welding visor will attach. Once those have been removed, they can actually be stored inside the respirator on the air vent. That way you've got them for if you need to put them back into position at a later date. Now that they have been stored inside the respirator, we can now get our welding visor and attach it to the Z-Link. With that now clipped in position, to remove that, you simply pry that off on the edges until that visor comes apart. Now if you are trying to put that on and it's not meeting up in the right position, you may need to lift that visor up to get it to locate the first time. When you come to take it off though, make sure it's in the down position so that you know where it clips in when you come to put that visor back on. So now, with the weld visor, replacing lenses. On the inside of the weld visor are two green tabs at the top. They simply get spread apart so that the green weld visor will remove. This then gives you access to remove the front protective lens that is protecting the auto darken filter. It's really important that this is always in position because any weld splatter getting on your auto darken lens could result in it becoming damaged and failing to work. If you do need to replace your auto darken lens, you simply press down on the tab at the bottom until that lens pops out. You can also push out on the inside to allow that there to come out. With the auto darken lens out, I want to just explain a few points about this. On the opposite side of the auto darken lens, you have your sensitivity adjustment. You've also got your shade adjustment from a shade 9 through shade 13. You've also got the ability to fix it on a shade 3 for the grinding mode. There are also two replaceable batteries that can be easily replaced on the inside of this battery cover. Also on the inside of the battery cover is a small toggle that can allow you to turn on or off the auto delay function. Having it set to fast mode will allow the lens to brighten very quickly once you've stopped that weld. Having it set to the twilight mode will enable that lens to gradually brighten once you've finished that weld. Having it set to the twilight mode is especially important if you're doing a very splattery weld or getting a lot of flickering. There's also a replaceable lens on the inside of this auto darken filter. It is again extremely important that that is always in position so that when you do have the weld visor flipped up and any grinding debris is not causing any damage to the inside of your auto darken lens. The weld visor that I'm also showing you here today is also fitted with our magnifying lens. This is an optional kit that you can purchase and simply attach the clips to either side of the weld visor opening and then insert the magnification that you need to be able to see clearly what you are welding. So now to insert the auto darken lens again, we're locating it at the top and then we're simply just pressing it in at the bottom and allowing that clip to clip back into position. We can then attach the outer cover lens by simply locating it into one edge here and then we're going to locate it into the opposite locator by just squeezing that lens together. Okay. 
and allowing that to clip in. Now we can replace the auto darken lens cover. Once that's all clipped into position, we can then attach that onto the Z-Link. Once that's attached, you get the ability to be able to easily flip that up and down. If you do need to replace any of the parts that are on here, the springs or the clips, they are all replaceable from RPB Safety. So flipping the weld visor up also still gives you the ability to be able to get full grinding vision, but also that ability to flip that grinding visor up so that you can easily communicate with your peers or to take a break without having to take that full respirator off. With that grinding visor open, you can see that there's the adjustable air vent on the inside. That enables you to change the direction of airflow within the respirator. Having the air more over your face or more over the visor is going to make it more comfortable for you when you're working at, say, hotter or maybe colder temperatures. To replace that grinding lens, I'm first going to remove the auto darken lens just for ease of showing you how to do this. And then just pop that grinding visor open just a little. You'll notice that there's a Z-Link logo at the bottom corner of the lens. Behind that logo is a clip that is clipping that weld grinding visor together. By rotating that out will separate that visor in two. This then gives you access to remove that grinding lens. Once you've removed that, to replace it, you'll simply Locate it in the bottom locator, and then make sure that the tabs on each side are locating into position, as well as the two points at the top. Once they're in position, you can then close the visor, and I'd encourage you to do this with the respirator facing away from you. You use your fingers to hold the lens in position at the top, and then use your thumbs to close the visor down, making sure that you've sealed that lens in position at the top. Once that there's in position, you can then go ahead and open that visor, and then make sure that those two corners are clipped together. Once that's done, you're then ready to continue using your respirator. For the shroud, the one that I'm showing you today is our full shoulder cape. We also offer it at a simple neck seal and also an FR chin seal as well. So for this respirator, it is attached with our full shroud. If you need to replace this, you'll notice that there are plastic clips that are located up on the inside of this respirator. They will need to be unclipped from the inside to allow that whole side to come apart. So I'm now going to just go up underneath here and release that clip and allow that there to come out. That's the clip that I was releasing on the inside. I can go ahead and release that on both sides. and allow both sides of that cape to come free. At the back of the helmet, there are two Velcro straps that will need to be undone. This will allow the back portion of that shroud to come away from the respirator. Then, at the front point, there are two small Phillips head screws that will need to be undone to allow the front portion of that cape to come away from the respirator. Once you've undone that, you'll then be able to replace that whole shroud with the new one by first starting with locating the two screws, screwing that front clip into position, and then attaching the Velcro straps at the back.
making sure that you do them up nice and snug. Once those are in position, we can now reattach the clips on the side. And you'll notice that there's a small notch in the front of that clip. That is going to locate into the small locator on the side or in the channel of that Z-Link. So we're going to get that located. And at the same time we're doing that, we want to make sure that that rubber strip is also going into the channel. With that now started and getting into position, we simply press that up until the clip clips into position on the inside. If you're unsure if that clip has clipped into position, you can simply go up on the inside and ensure that that is pressed and located into position there so that that bracket doesn't come loose. You can then repeat the same process on the opposite side by first locating the little locator, making sure our rubber gaskets are going into the channel, and giving that a push up until that clips into position, check it on the inside, and you're then good to go. You're then ready to finish pushing that rubber gasket in around the outside, and around the back of the respirator, making sure that that is pressed all the way up, and then finalize the jaw. And that shroud is now attached to the Z-Link. On the inside of your respirator, you have a replaceable brow pad that can be simply unvelcroed and replaced, and also a replaceable head top that is giving you some padding on the top of that respirator. That can also be unvelcroed and machine washed in a cool machine wash and allowed to air dry, or it can simply be replaced. There's also the ratchet adjustment at the back of the helmet that tightens that helmet onto your head once you're putting it on. There is also an optional attachment for a light that can attach to the front of the Z-Link and also the ability to add earmuffs to the inside of your respirator if that's something that you felt was needed in your work environment. That's a little bit of information on how to use and set up and replace parts on your Z-Link Plus welding grinding respirator. Thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.